Hi y'all, welcome back to my shop. Today we got a magical project for all you potter heads out there. Uh, for this week's Four Ways Collaboration video, we're doing a project uh, proposed by Richard Raffin, a wooden goblet inspired by the fantasy movie Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. So I hope you'll stay tuned. So I tried to use my imagination to come up with a, uh, a turned wooden goblet that I might have turned for the movie set had, by, had I been requested to do so, which is pretty fanciful since the movie came out in 2005 and I was still working for a living and it was two years later before I fell into the wood turning vortex. So let me describe my design approach. I looked at various images of other wooden goblets on Pinterest and I made a few sketches and lastly I turned these three uh, miniature uh, maquettes. Now what's a maquette in art? Well a maquette is a model for a larger piece of sculpture created in order to visualize how it might look and to work out approaches and materials on on how it might be made. For this project today I'm going to use this dried piece of maple. It's got a date on it, January 13th. I'm not sure where I got it from. It's uh, uh, oh, approximately four and a quarter inches in diameter or 105 millimeter and in length it's uh, about 145 millimeter or about five and three quarter inches. I'm going to use this template because it's somewhat of an odd shape and to find what I think is going to be the center and use my spring punch with my recently acquired uh, mushroom handle. Do that on both sides. Okay, now we're going to mount it between the centers and turn it round. Standard full size one, I think. Get it parallel and we're going to turn this round and see it make sure it clears and then it looks like it's fairly squared up, which it is. So let's get it round. I'm using a spindle roughing gouge, never to be used on a bowl. We'll get the speed up a little bit, oh maybe maybe 1500, it's a fair size blank and then it's fairly evenly balanced. Anchor the tool, ride the bevel. That means rub the edge without seeing shavings and then lift the handle until it cuts. I'm going to be mounting this in, uh, in a larger uh, chuck with a really powerful set of jaws, uh, larger than my normal jaws, to minimize the vibration when I'm hollowing and embellishing. So I'm going to use my template and mark mark about where, that temp where that's going to be, that tenon, and there we go. This side's a little bit uneven, so let's go ahead and take it down a little bit. And this is the calls, my chuck jaws call for a dovetail. So I just incline my painting and parting tool just slightly for that dovetail. So let's remove it from between centers and put it in the chuck. Open it up, put it in there, press on the center, get it even. And you can tell that you've got a nice tenon on it when you can't get a, a piece of paper slit, slipping between the wood and the face of the jaws. Before I drill and hollow the cup, I've got to face it off a little bit. my maquettes for the ratio I want about 40% of, of the goblet, uh, the total goblet to be the, the bowl so I'm going to measure this and it comes out to about 5 inches or approximately 125 millimeter and so I'm going to come down about 50 millimeter or 2 inches and that'll be the bottom of the cup. I want to go ahead and mark that and do a slight parting cut so, so my eye will have something to kind of gauge my design against. So I've got that. I'm going to use an eighth inch parting tool just to make a very slight cut. Not enough to weaken the, the, the hole or anything for the support, 
but enough to give my eye something to, to look at. So now I'm going to start shaping that the top of that goblet. I think, I think I'll come down a little bit. Deep. Switch the beading tool since I'm going to come down a little ways. <laughs> use a, a 3 8 inch spindle gouge for this project for most of the shaping. I could use a bowl gouge but I like spindle gouge for this. So I want to get a rough shape for that curve before I start hollowing it. So this is where the wood needs to come off so that's what I need to deal with first. And work my way back. And that gives me a pretty good idea. I think I'm going to bring it back just a little bit more. that's going to be. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to drill a hole before we start really hollowing. So I'm going to use this large one inch Morse taper drill bit just because I have it. I've had it for several years. makes it very convenient for starting and opening. I'm going to drill down uh, about two inches. So the easiest way for me, I could measure this, put tape on it, but I'm going to go ahead and use these markings here. And I set it at one inch so I know how far to go. In this case, three inches. I'm going to turn the speed down and, and bring it up to no more than about 300, 500 rather, and then drill that hole. It's dry wood so the chips are clearing fairly easily. And there we go. Maybe 1200 or so. Hollowing until I get the wall down to a reasonable thickness. Okay. That's about the wall thickness I'm shooting for. It's a little thicker through here. I can feel like so. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and, and grab a round nose scraper and kind of clean up the inside. I'm use this round no scraper, but first I need to put a fresh burr on it. So I'm going to take off the old burr with a CBN hone. And then I'm going to use a carbide uh, rod and just bring up that burr, similar to the way you do it on a, on a uh, scraper for flat work. That'll give me a nice burr that ought to deal with this soft wood. Looking, examine the wood, make sure I don't have any cracks or anything that's going to surprise me. And we're going to go ahead and Take it down a little bit rounder on the inside. Put the tool rest up just a little bit because this maybe this conventional scraper needs to be handle up, point down to keep from getting a catch. spring calipers. I look for the gap here and as I go down to see if that gap gets smaller or larger, gets smaller which means it's a little fat down in here so I need to work on that a bit more. I'll do a little clean up here with the negative rake scraper to uh, minimize my sanding later. So very light touch, just hitting any tool marks. And then I'm going to come up and rotate it so I can get a shear scrape on the wall. a 
tiny bit of uh, tear out with this drive in, in grain, so I'm just going to hit it with this. Just get it damp a little bit to stiffen the fibers. If this doesn't work, I can move up to something a little stronger, but I think this will this will probably do just fine. Put a little more water in there than I wanted. Go ahead and get that out. Now we'll give that a second for the, the uh, fibers to absorb that. And then we'll make our final, final pass. power sander with a little sanding lubricant on here to keep the, some of the small dust down. Slow the speed down a little bit to maybe a third of what I was turning at and go through the various grits. And I go through all the grits. Alright with the interior sanding out of the way I can go, go back to finishing the bottom of this cup so we can do some embellishing on it. So let's let's use our 3 8 inch spindle gouge. We're going to just remove a little more wood here. That gives me enough to finish the outside of this, of this bowl. I'm going to uh, use a shear scraper to kind of refine that, that edge. But I can't get into this corner with this scraper, so let me switch. I'll switch to a spear point where I can come in from the other direction. Just refine that curve. Get rid of any tool marks and get the curve around. Now I can sand it and start embellishing this, uh, this side. If you like me, you think uh, finding a new, learning a new skill is, is a fun thing. And I, I recently acquired these wood carving chisels from uh, Rec Record Power in order that I could add a new embellishment technique to some of my wood turning, such as these maquettes that, that I did and I applied some bowls. And, and like, like wood turning, wood carving does require some, some practice, so I've, I've been working on that a little, little bit. And I, I think this, this project I'm working on today is going to be a great opportunity to apply some of those limited, limited wood carving skills that I've, I've got. Uh, I acquired these, these tools from the wood turning store. I'll have a link to, this, to them in the uh, show notes uh, below. They've got a couple of smaller sets, but I think this set of 12 is, is really a great value for a beginning wood carver like myself. So my plan is to cut a series of flutes here, similar to uh, this maquette or... Or, or this this bowl, and I'm going to do it in a kind of a random fashion. I'm not going to index or anything real special. I am going to border it though. I think with a bead on each side. So I need to go ahead and mark where that cut's going to start, and I hope I can handle that successfully. And then where it's going to end, because I'm going to put another bead at the bottom. All right, I'm using the number 12 tool. Trying to slice with it using the fist technique. This goes pretty fast. I'm, I'm happy with how this is looking. Very happy. And the carving, the ideal carving height is the same as for well, wood turning, it's about your spindle, uh, your elbow height. It's 
same as your lathe, lathe spindle. All right, now I'll look to see if there's anything I want to go back and change, but well, that didn't take long at all, and I think I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to frame this. Probably doesn't need framing, but maybe it does, and I'm going to do that with just turning a small bead. I'm going to go right in on top of that line, go get the speed up a little bit here, about 1200. my point tool. You see this double line over here. Let's make sure I'm getting pretty close to yeah, okay. Come in perpendicular to the wood here. Trying to match the size that bead at the top. And that's, that's pretty close. I'm gonna roll it over. Roll it over, roll it over, roll it over. And I'm very happy with the look of that. Uh, I think I want to come in, undercut this bead a little bit here at the bottom. And so I will do that and then start working on the uh, rest of it. So I'm going to use my 3 8 inch spindle gouge and just grains running this way. So I'm just going to kind of, like I'm doing a pole, just kind of cut away from the, the bead and then try to keep up the curve. I think I'm going to have to get in there with a scraper, so let's try that. Let's use this spear point to kind of come in here very carefully. And then come in here and clean up that transition. I've still got just a little bit of a little bit of damage here. Okay, I think sanding will take care of the rest. I'm gonna use a sanding stick to uh, Soften that edge right next to that bead, I think. And on this edge. Being soft maple, of course, you can tear out a little bit. Now I'm going to come in there with some 240. Put that bead. Put that bead. You can come up underneath it a little hard here, see 240. And I think that's just about got it. Now I'm going to turn a bead in the middle of, of this uh, handle of shaft, and that's designed to help you brace it when you're holding holding this thing. And you know, Christians had a couple thousand years of perfecting these uh, chalices. Chalice is a goblet used to hold uh, wine for religious uh, services. Um, but what's not clear to me is what size. And I've got two different size spiraling tools, and, and this is the larger one. Now let's try a smaller one. I want to look at the two side by side to see which side, which size might look best. So I've turned two beads approximately the same size, maybe a little larger than the beads that are going to be on my final goblets. So I've turned the speed down to about 450. Let's just give this a try here. have to get a soft piece of, piece of maple and try this again because boy this is looking terrible but but I think I can look at this and evaluate and decide what size I want for my my goblet and I think it's going to be the I don't know I'll have to think about it. I need to remove some of the waste wood here so I've got room to work so let's just do that. Where we're going 
going with this. I think my bead is going to go right here. So I need a flat area for that, that, that bead knob. It's going to go to about there. And I'm going to undercut it. So I'm going to come down on each side. wide that bead's going to be. I think it's going to be about an inch and a quarter, so let's let's measure that out. I'm getting pretty close to that, so all I've got to do, I think, is just clean this up a little bit, take this down a little bit, uh, a little bit behind it. sand this before I texture it. Now this spiraling tool is essentially a scraper which means that you need to use it in negative rakes. I'm going to come up under it and lift it and then I'm going to come across this flat band at about 400, 450. You can't go very fast. Slow down and just let it engage. And now I'm just going to slowly oscillate back and forth let the tool do its work. And it's got a very nice spiral. Now I don't like that square pattern, but you can't do this on a round surface on both sides. So now, now that I've got the essentials of a bead, I can round it over and pick up that, that cut half inch spindle gouge and just round over the corners here. Get the speed back up again. Come back and clean up that later. Okay, now the challenge is picking up that cut and bring it around with the tool perpendicular to the edge. So again, speed of no more than about 450. Drop it down, engage the cut, put the ease it in, and now slowly bring it around the edge of the pretty good. I'm happy with that. And okay, that's good. Now I can go ahead and finish shaping that bead. Uh, put a little detail around it. Maybe a little fillet here, a little fillet here, and then shape the base. Excuse me, do a little bit of cleanup on each side. I'm going to come down here. I want to take a little bit of a fillet there, and I think I'm going to come in there with that beading and parting tool and create that, that fillet. A little flat area.
like I can sand the rest of that. Okay, so now I'm going to make that fillet in, and make a little cove into the bottom of the bead. And then right here. And now do a cove on each side of the bead. the size of this one so let's see if I can't just come in here and layer that up. Okay that's about the same. Now I want to kind of cove in here but now we've got to start working on the base. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mark where the bottom is with a parting tool. I'll use a eighth inch uh, parting tool. Now, I want to take this down a little bit because it's too big. Um, I want it to be a little bit smaller, maybe 80% of the, the goblet size. feature right here. I want to come in and actually make a bead right here. I don't like the sound of that. And then we're going to make kind of a asymmetrical fold here. And now we're going to make a cove right here. See if I can get this tool rest in a little bit closer. Maybe need a bigger, bigger tool rest to get in there. Got one that's a little bit longer. Yet doesn't get too much in the way. That's perfect. Okay. So now I want to make a little fillet at the bottom. So I'm going to now. Now that I can get in there, I think I can switch this 3 8 inch. So I feel a little more comfortable with details with. And actually, I think I want to use my detail spindle gouge retooled. That'll, that'll work. So I want to make this fillet same as that one. So I'm going to come in here and, and slice in. All right, I got that. Now I want to do a cove. I'm going to do my regular 3 8 inch. Just cut a cove in here, all the way to the bottom of that fillet. Underneath that fillet. Huh, this tool is dull. Let me sharpen it. 
I'm going to round, round over this edge here just a little bit so it doesn't look so thick and clunky. Just a bit of a pull cut. Support it a little bit with the bottom of my hand, maybe that'll temper it a little bit. sanding but I've got I did get around it over a little bit so all I got to do is do a little finish sanding down here and uh, take it off the lathe for finishing okay I'm going to use my 16th of an inch uh, sorbet fluted parting tool to part this off and then when I get to the end I will probably use a saw speed up to about a thousand come in there out of the way when you saw them. And then I can finish up the end very easily with sanding man on the lathe. Okay, and I'm happy with that. And there you have it, my version of the magical goblet of, of fire. I hope you'll take this opportunity to watch the other three videos by collaborators, Richard Raffin, Sam Angelo, and Thomas Love, uh, Thomas Edge. I'll have the links in the in the, uh, in the description description area. I want to share my passion for wood turning uh, with you by, by inspiring and, and training. Your comments are important to me, your feedback is important to me, so leave it in the comments area below. And y'all remember, stay safe and come on back, you hear?